welcome to the next episode of Tech Edit Crafts. Today we are looking at fences. All sorts of various fences. I've got model fences. I've got nice simple uh, country fences. I've got some sci-fi fences and that's that's always good to have some, some fences around your installations. We've got hedges Hedges going into padding fences. A hedge with a bush. All right. Mm. Plaster uh, and plaster with gates. This material is, is actually bought, uh, so try to find a way to use it in the hedging. There's a whole stack of different techniques that I have used. What I will do in the video, I will set them up so one, one entire process. Build, paint, next technique. If I can figure out how to do it, I will put tags in the video. If not, I'll write in the description as to what time they're on. Don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe and turn on that notification button. Make sure you never miss an episode of Tech Edit Crafts. If you'd like to support the channel, you can pop over to Patreon and become a supporter there at uh, www.patreon.com slash techadeptcrafts and join us there at the hobby table. That'd be a really, really great way for you to support the channel and make sure that these videos keep coming. In the Patreon, we also keep getting fantastic STLs from uh, Ian Lovecraft, uh, who is the designer of amazing pieces like this. Uh, that was from the from the Frost, but that's not on Patreon. But there's a few little sneak peeks as to what's coming up for July. And if uh, you do like your sci-fi and fantasy, and maybe if you're a fan of Richard Dean Anderson and Kurt Russell, if you know why those two are linked, come and check it out and and see if you'd like to join the Patreon there. Sit back, enjoy the tutorial, and uh, let me know what sort of hedges or fences that you would like to see. Or if you've done your own set of fences or hedges, throw a photo our way at Tech Edit Crafts on Instagram and, uh, and tag us in that. I'd love to, I'd love to see your, your progress in making your own set of fences or hedges. Anyway, I'll see you at the end of the video. Cheers. I have a stack of these leftover MDF bases from making hedges the last time. You can see they're cut with an angle on the corner. That allows you to place them not only end to end, but also on angles and going into each other it at odd shapes. And that just gives you a lot of variety. These are using the plaster cast walls I've shown in another video. You can see here I've got a wide collection of leftover bits, and this is what I've drawn from to make these walls. I won't go through the whole process, there's a link above to be able to do that. I'm making a gate though to do that, and this is using balsa wood. I'm just cutting a simple square frame with a diagonal bracket. For a lot of the earlier stuff, I was gluing it together with PVA glue, but later I swapped to super glue as it was a lot faster to get it to dry. Once it is all glued down and dried, I give all of the plaster a coating of Mod Podge just to help seal it in, and it just made painting it a lot easier. I have talked about my stone technique that I do using at least three times before, so I won't go through that here. The fences all had the same technique done. They had the burnt umber, then it was a raw umber, and then a dry brush of a combination of soft moss by Kaiser Color and that raw umber. And that then got dry brushed over all the stonework as well, that, that soft moss and gray. I'm using a green paint to paint all of the base of this. It's getting flock in a moment, but I want to put a green base on first. Once it's dry, I then put PVA glue, spread that around, and then put that flock along the edge. Uh, and it'll easily go on my green mat that I have. Next fence is a great recycler. These are the offcuts from a spool of filament. I am using the skewers that I used back in the crystal episode and putting them into a uh, the end of a pizza corrugated cardboard. I'm using a hairdryer and you know that that's not my hairdryer just to heat the, the PLA and then it's just, it softens and I can shape it into the shape that I want. I glue it down with super glue and there is your nice little wattle fence, almost ready to go. Um, snip off the excess, cut it off the base, shape it up, and then we're gonna stick it down on the base. 
For the base of this one, I'm also using that corrugated cardboard just for something different. I'm poking holes with the skewers and it just slots straight in. Glue it into place and then we're going to put some sand on this base. So we'll do it in a slightly different way. We're doing sand just to cover up the edges of corrugated cardboard. I don't need to put it over the entire base. Really, it's just the edges are the necessary part. And when we paint this up, I have started with a black spray just so that uh, just so that the PLA will actually take the paint a little easier. Going with lots of browns here, working it up to a nice little dirt color rather than a gray base. We're going with a dirt color here. And uh, this beautiful yellow oxide color that I've got from, that I've got from Li Liquitex Basic Acrylics. Uh, I'm using that as my main uh, lightening agent for those, uh, for those paints. I'm then adding in unbleached titanium to blend up to a much lighter color there for those wooden branches. You then add the flock, but it doesn't need to go over all of it. It's only covering up the patches that you didn't put the sand on to start with. And there we go, fence done. Next up, some sci-fi fences. These are like security fences. I'm using the old fly screen and some wooden slats that I'm cutting up from some, uh, just, they were, they were sticks that I had lying around. They were some sort of hobby stick. I really don't know where I got it from. A lot of my hobby tools have been sitting around for decades, just waiting to be used. The fly screen does not go well with PVA glue, so you want to stick these together using super glue. Don't stick your fingers down through that. Uh, that the hard way. I'm using two sticks either side, or two of those those supports either side, and then just cut off the excess. And to help get them to sit on the MDF board, I'm creating some little struts here that you can see, uh, and they are just to essentially give it a T um, or a full cross joint once you put the whole support on. And that makes it a lot more sturdy. I found it was much easier to do to put one side on while you were laying it flat, then stick it down on the base, and then put the other side on once it's standing upright. Just to put something over the top, I put this little strip there. I'm using a silver paint just to dry brush onto that mesh, giving it a bit more of a uh, a wire fence look. I tried painting it straight onto the wood, but that did not come through. So I'm now doing a base on the wood of a gray. If I did this again, I would probably give the whole thing a spray black first. Bit of copper just for the top for a little bit of variance and on those support struts. Just makes them look a little different rather than just the concrete slabs that it looks like for the rest of it. You may have worked out that I like to hoard pieces of rubbish to use for various different hobby projects, but the moment I needed those scouring pads, I had to go buy some new ones. Can't find the old set. Tried folding them. Nope, that didn't work, so I just cut two strips, glued them together. PVA glue. Nope, that doesn't work either. Let's go back to the old uh, super glue. That held it really nicely. I have been looking for years for corkboard, and I don't know why I, I cannot find it. One day last term, I, I just happened to walk into a store, and I really wish I could remember what store it was, but I found this corkboard, so I'm using it on these pieces. You can see there, I'm again doing those angled cuts so that you can put the pieces uh, uh, in various shapes, uh, in various configurations when you set them up on the board. As well as the hedges, I'm also doing these paling fences. The, the, they're like a stock standard country fence. I see them all the time on my way back to my um, hometown. They are used for horse pens, they're used for um, sheep pens, what have you, and they're just really good standard country fences. You know what? They're not all in working order. So making a couple of broken ones, that adds flavor to your board. 
doing a mix here. So having half a fence going into some of that hedging. And uh, you know what? I, uh, you don't need to make the entire fence. Make part of it and then just have it match up. This way I can actually tie the two pieces, the wooden pieces, tying into the hedge pieces, and that, that works really well. So let's make another one. These things, I don't know how you're going to describe them. They're like little green puff balls. Um, apparently they are very good for making moss uh, for um, like a flower arranging. Anyway, I, I saw them and thought, well, they'll make good hedge bushes. That's great. So I, um, I stick it down there, I put some of that scouring pad going in underneath, but I did find a better way to secure them, and that was instead of putting the, the spike into the bush first, I push it up through the cork board and then cut it off. We're going back and doing the fence, that burnt umber, raw umber, then dry brush of the, the um, soft moss mixed in with it. I'm also using that soft moss just to do a, a light dry brushing on those um, bush hedges, uh, the, the, the larger bushes, because they did seem fairly stock standard. This Liquitec ink I am adding into a the brown wash and the black wash done by um, Jeremy over at Black Magic Craft. And I'm putting that all in through the scouring pad to darken it and give it some extra texture. We paint the base and that'll go flocked as well. And then I am dry brushing up all of those hedges with a variety of greens, working up through to this yellow green. And then at the very end, I am having a cadmium yellow. Now I'm gradually doing the lighter shades towards the top of the hedges. The bottom I'm still leaving fairly dark. To add a little bit of extra texture, I'm going back to that, um, that field grass that I used on the June Patreon and just having a little couple of tufts every now and then and those hedges are done and I'm really happy with how that's turned out. I don't often use bought texture walls, but for this one, I'm going with that. This is going to be a straightforward wall. I'm using foam core here, a strip, and uh, peeling the top layer off, and then carving stonework into it, just using one of those skewers. On top of it, I had a couple of choices. That, that one was still in the packet, so I thought, no, I'll leave that. This piece has been floating around for at least 20 years plus. Uh, and it, it just needed a project that I could use it for. So I'm cutting just two centimeter strips of this wall back to back, gluing them together, and then um, gluing them onto the base. I do a trim to put on the top and a post uh, just on one end. Um, I'm only putting the post on one end and that's just using balsa wood. And then on the top, again, balsa wood strip, which I then mark off to make it look like it is uh, like paving tiles going all the way across the top. Once I've stuck that I know how wide it is, I then cut those corners off. And that's the build done for that one. Really simple. Mod Podge all over because there's a lot of foam on that and that just will help seal it. And again, we go do that multi-tone stonework. But I didn't do a huge amount on this one. I'm doing brown top on that just to give a, a wood look. And I really liked that color variance. Nice little dry brush on the, the stone along the base and that just brought out the detail there. And that's done. Right, so they have very, very simple fences and hedges and a number of different ways to base them, to build them, to paint them. Hopefully that was insightful. And if it was, don't forget to hit like, leave a comment down the bottom. And uh, also come and follow us on Patreon at patreon.com slash tech edit crafts you can also tag us on instagram at tech adept crafts also jump on over to ian lovecraft's uh, youtube channel and check out his videos coming out the latest one there on mushrooms the the one of the add-ons from the fay wood collection ah oh, these mushrooms you know that there's going to be another video coming on painting mushrooms because yeah that's my jam love those mushrooms they are so much fun to paint Anyway guys, that's it for this week. Hopefully you enjoyed that and I'll see you in the future. Cheers.